Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm a captain, instructor on ATR 42 and 72 aircraft. And this channel is all about aviation. Today, I will talk about how the engines are started. It's fairly simple as the pilot just has to turn a selector, push a button and move a lever. After the engine has started, the selector is turned back to neutral. However, starting an engine requires you to be 100% focused. As with all automated systems, things might go wrong. Therefore, you need to know where to look and what to look for. In this video, I will show the starting procedure used in the 500 and 600 variants. Earlier ATRs have other engine versions. Therefore, some of the indications are different in those variants. Before you start the engines, you must comply with the limitation set in FCOM limitation, chapter 570. During start, after moving the condition level out of fuel shutoff position, the ITT must increase within 10 seconds. ITT must not exceed 800 degrees Celsius for more than 20 seconds and 840 degrees for 5 seconds. If ITT exceeds 950 degrees, the engine must be inspected by maintenance. Temperatures above 800 degrees during start are very rare. It has happened to me once, and that was due to tailwind, hot weather and a short turnaround time. On the overhead panel, we have engine start and propeller brake panels. The propeller brake is attached to the propeller gearbox on engine number two, which is on the right side. With the propeller brake engaged, the engine can run while the propeller is not turning. In order to engage or disengage the propeller brake, there must be blue hydraulic power. This can be achieved by running engine number one, which keeps the main hydraulic pumps running, or by pressing the hid aux pump push button on the pedestal. A green ready light will then illuminate. This allows for the DC generator to supply the aircraft with electrical power and the air condition to supply the cabin with cool or warm air. This is called hotel mode. The benefit is that the aircraft doesn't need an APU, auxiliary power unit. On the pedestal, we have the condition levers. In the fuel shutoff position, the fuel shutoff valve is closed. In feather position, the engine is running with the propeller feathered. In auto position, which is used for taxi and flight, the propeller RPM is controlled automatically. AFIS cockpit indications for engine start are ITT, interturbine temperature, NH, high pressure shaft rotation speed. This shaft is connected to the electrical starter. Fuel flow, oil pressure, NP, propeller rotation speed. PEC single channel indication and low pitch indication. Glass cockpit indications are on both MFD's engine secondary page. When the engine starts, select is set to start. NH, ITT, fuel shutoff valve position, open or closed, fuel flow, oil pressure. A start label is also shown when the engine starter is engaged. On the engine warning display, the indications are NP, propeller brake label, PEC single channel label, and low pitch label. Each engine has two spark plugs called A and B. Recommended practice is to use A and B for the first start of the day, then A for odd days, and B for even days. In some companies, they use A for odd flight numbers and B for even flight numbers. Recommended practice from the manufacturer is that the first officer starts the engines. This is based on the philosophy that it's pilot monitoring that operates the condition levers and that the first officer is pilot monitoring on the ground. However, it's up to the airline company to decide who starts the engines. In some companies, it is the captain who starts the engines. Personally, I prefer a procedure where the pilots start one engine each. That keeps them both current. 
ATI aircraft are designed to operate at airports without ground support. Recommended practice is to start engine number 2 in hotel mode before the boarding starts. This ensures that the aircraft has sufficient electrical power to perform all pre-flight checks and support the cabin with lights, etc. In addition, you have air conditioning, which is convenient when it's cold or hot outside. The recommended start sequence is as following. Start engine number 2 in hotel mode. Do the pre-flight checks and welcome the passengers on board. When the doors are closed and you are clear to start, release the propeller brake and set the condition lever to auto. Then start engine number one and set the condition lever to auto. But hotel mode has some downsides. It's noisy and the exhaust gases might drift to the doors and engine air intake. And therefore the air condition can be contaminated. Additionally, hotel mode consumes fuel. Therefore, when you have GPU, ground power unit, you only need to use hotel mode if the cabin is unacceptable cold or warm. And if it's hot and you have an external air condition, you don't need to use hotel mode at all. There is also a possibility that the propeller brake is inoperative. Without hotel mode, you can start in the following way. Start engine number one. Disconnect GPU and external air condition. Set condition level 1 to auto. Release the propeller brake if it is engaged. Start engine number 2 and set the condition level to auto. Why do we start engine number 1 first? Because the GPU and external air condition are connected to the right side of the aircraft. It's safer for the ground crew to start the engine on the opposite side first. This is how you start engine number 2 in hotel mode. Check that the service door is closed, fuel pump on, wing lights on. This informs the ground crew to stay clear of the propellers. Propeller brake on. We call this the U-flow and we do it by memory. Get the clear signal from the marshaller. If the marshaller doesn't have headset, you use this hand signal. Engine 2, brake. Select Start A and B, Start A or Start B. Press the Start to push button and observe the on light inside the push button. On variants with glass cockpit, there will also be a green start label on the MFD. At the same time, the other pilot start the stopwatch. When NH reaches 10%, move the condition lever to feather. This opens the fuel shutoff valve and activates the ignition. However, when ITT is more than 100 degrees Celsius, you delay this action. When ITT is 200 degrees or more, you move the condition lever to feather at 20% NH. When ITT is between 100 and 200 degrees Celsius, you move the condition lever to feather when NH is one tenth of the ITT. For example, ITT is 160 degrees. You move the condition lever to feather at 16% NH. This allows for some extra cooling of the turbines. When you move the condition lever to feather, you start the stopwatch. Normally, ITT starts to increase within a couple of seconds. If ITT doesn't increase within 10 seconds, you must abort the start. When the engine is warm, the oil pressure will increase at about 40% NH. And at 45% NH, the starter disengages and the on light in the push button extinguishes. The other pilot will stop the stopwatch and announce the starter running time. Normal starting runner time with a warm engine is about 16 seconds. A battery start requires a little more time. Same with a cold start. ITT will reach the maximum shortly after. The engine stabilizes at 67% NH. Select the starter selector to off and start abort. When clear to start the engine, select the propeller brake off. NP will stabilize at 14.5%. When the condition lever is moved to auto, the PEC, propeller electronic control, will run a self-test for 3 seconds. This triggers an amber single channel indication. When NP passes 30%, we get low pitch indication. 
which means that the propeller pitch is controlled by the power lever. The engine start procedure is completed when NP is stabilized at 70.8%. I will now show the starting procedure in an ATS-72-600. The first officer will start engine number one, and the captain starts engine number two during pushback. The yellow labels are colors used by the pilot starting the engine, and the blue labels are the colors used by the non-starting pilot. So here we go.
And this concludes this video. Please support my channel by clicking like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. More videos are in the making. And that's all for this time. Have a wonderful day and happy learning!